pulling from all over the place. Well, North Americans don't go anywhere else. So yeah, exactly. it's, like, it's like nobody is in Europe going, that North American talent, though. <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, we have entered into Champion Select. Azir banned away from Peckinwolf. He has played that quite frequently. Kindred taken away from Contracts, his huge carry champ in the previous game. And uh, Rek'Sai and Rise also banned away. Acadian very fond of that Rek'Sai. But that Rise, very strong scaling champion. Could go mid, could go top. I, I'm not so sure that Ra Balls would play that, but who knows? Might better not yeah. to take the chance. Vladimir also banned away. Yeah, he does play it, the Vladimir towards Pekinwolf again. Pekinwolf shares a very similar style right now to a Blaze Olive. And Pekinwolf was talking about how he wants to move a little bit away from the wave control, a little bit away from the uh, uh, control style, and go a little bit more towards Assassins, which he has accomplished in the past with something like LeBlanc. But right now, I don't think he has to be that flexible. Victor's still on the table, great pick for him. And I think that's probably what he'll go with if it actually makes its way through. Mm -hmm. Playing an Assassin against a team like Cloud9, Sets the bar pretty high, but Karma is going to be the first pick for C9C. Once again, Lemonation, possibly high. It's Lemonation with the Karma. <sighs> Did <Yeah>. it last week. <laughs> Such a strong champion, though. It just enables so much. And again, this is on patch 612. We didn't bring it up earlier, so minor buffs and balance changes here and there. Yeah, uh, it's like Corky got lower cooldown on his Valkyrie. Yeah. Uh, his E is a little bit different in terms of how quickly it shreds or the ticks, I guess, so you can walk out of it and not take as much. But the Gatling still. gun. Uh, Fizz got a nerf, which is probably the big one. Mm. Zed got slight changes to how you play them. It, it's more color indicators. It makes it easier to read. Well, them. yeah, that's right. Um, adding just the tiny little rings, but <laughs> I don't think we're going to see the Jace and the Rengar locked These in. are their two signature champions. Akkadian was a one-trick pony for the Rengar, yeah. and uh, Chirong plays a ton of Jace, and Yes. All right. All right. Hecarim is locked in with a utility ash. Beware the Shadow Isles. Yeah, I literally was playing a whole bunch of Hecarim yesterday, and Kobe was playing it today. So we're like talking back and forth about, oh, what's what's your Hecarim build, man? Like, why are you taking red spite? I like blue spite, and like back and forth. <laughs> so he goes tank. I go uh, YOLO Thunderlords at the moment. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> Trinity Force oh, Thunderlords. I only do it because there was a Hecarim that did a drive by like level three on my turret. I got pushed in top lane, and then uh -huh. he pops Ghost E, and then just Thunderlords you and keeps going through oh my god it was awful so, so wait he attacks cues and then continues to move yep, through and he just goes through because he's like oh i'm taking turret aggro just kidding and he just walks <laughs> through and then the other guy the, ghost the other guy finishes you so yeah all righty so the next pickups are going to be graves and swain we're going to find out where that swain goes if it's for high or if lemon takes that karma or if it goes to balls but that graves likely going to contract yeah. in the jungle yeah i think that's graves for contracts i think that that's swain for balls, honestly, and then I think that the Karma is going to go down to the bottom lane. I think that they're going to wait here until they see what that mid lane pick is and maybe even pick up a victor for themselves. But I do think that because you have the Karma, the Swain is definitely enabled here. Karma yeah. is that support that people love picking now alongside of Vladimir or a Swain that enables them with the movement speed. Yeah, just so strong at letting slower champions get in. Not to mention, she looks pretty intimidating when she drops the shield. Ah! It's like an engage. <laughs> It's like whenever you hear the Sivir shout, your reaction is, oh, run away. Oh, but once again, that rumble is going to be hovered and locked in. All, All right. Team. Sweet. So rumble in the top lane for Chirong. Last time, we hadn't seen rumble for a good while. So in case you missed that game, the changes to rumble that we've been seeing, uh, that we've seen ever since we last saw him is his E is now an ammo system, but it actually recharges fairly quickly. Uh, his Q now does full damage to minions, mm -hmm. so his wave clears better. Uh, his cooldown on his ultimate went back down a little bit, so you can have those more frequent mid-game fights. And then I think the final thing is that he is fantastic. And the <laughs> you know, final, final thing is really that he's got a proto belt now in his item build, and yeah. just walk up to your face, use it, gap closer for his auto attacks when he's overheated, and it's just a lot of damage. And it does so much damage, not to mention that it scales with the ability power as well. So. We'll see a little bit of a different build from what we expect, but Cloud9 Challenger, that is all tech playing. Your eyes do not deceive you. Mm -hmm. Going to lock in the Jin that Sneaky is known for and Lissandra for high. Yeah, could be Lissandra top, could be Swain. So they just have flex picks right there. Uh, so not 100% where they're going, but Jin Karma, uh, double root lane. If you get hit by one of the roots, you're going to eat the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's a lot of movement speed there too. When Jin gets the crits and the movement speed, very potent and 
I'm interested to see the build that Alltech goes for because I'm seeing this Yomu's Ghost Blade, Dusk Blade build come out from Jin that just does so much damage because of the armor penetration yeah. that Squishies just can't hold up. And I think he'd do it against this team because there isn't a tank on Dream Team. Mm -hmm. We'll see how Acadian decides to build in this set. Final lock in is going to be Cassidin for Peck and Wolf. A little bit more cleanup. Yeah, a little more assassin as well. Yeah. Uh, the wave clear is the only question here for Dream Team up against the Lissandra and a Swain. It can get a little rough. Uh, especially since this team will siege. They will continue to clear waves. They'll use the Karma Poke as well. And honestly, the double TP is going to be a problem with the Lissandra roams. Yeah, it certainly might. But head on over to Twitter and tell us how you think this series is going to go down. Tweet hashtag C9CWin or hashtag DTWin. And we'll tally those as we get ready for this one. And to talk about that a little more, the double teleport. We saw High playing towards bot lane last week, continually trying to get Alltech and Lemon engaged and really just leaving balls on an island. Yeah, left him on an island and then just really took care of the other side lanes uh, for the time being. And when he plays like Twisted Fate, he just goes to both sides. So High likes to win other lanes, not so much his own. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much always been his style, right? You think back to when he was even playing Assassins, it was all about his roam timing. And that's what really made High a fantastic mid laner for his time. Wasn't his, he's like, oh, I have this large CS differential and I'm outplaying you. It's no. He likes to shove the wave in and go somewhere else and cause pressure that way. He's a very macro-focused player. Mm -hmm. That might just be what primes him to be such a good leader for the team, that he can read the map so well with those macro decisions. And 50 seconds in, we can see looks to be standard so far. Bit of damage finds Massacre from Lemonation, but He's going to be able to recall and get health in time. He actually has the option to lane swap here, but I'm not so sure that he's going to as he's head ba heads back down towards the bottom. All tech and lemon, though. Waiting just outside of vision of Peck and Wolf before they head back down towards the bottom side. So we will have two versus two lanes, standard lane setups, which means Balls will be able to play against his cousin if he so chooses. Well, I imagine... He doesn't really have to choose at this point. It's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know. As they both head into the solo lane. Yeah. They both walk up to that top side. Leash coming through. Cloud Knight Challenger will try to disrupt this. Disrupting a Hecarim early is actually quite effective. Uh, he gets a little bit low in the jungle on his first clear. So whatever harass you can actually get off is very much worth it. Yeah, good attempt at a read from Lemonation. Doesn't quite find Acadian, but... Still lands some damage onto Massacre and trades it back. And Altec is going to start off with the Snare as well. So everybody's in lane. Standard setup so far. And interested in this bottom lane because it's a back and forth. Uh, both lanes have pressure and arranged support, which we've seen become incredibly prevalent after MSI. Everybody just picked up ranged supports. And they're so strong. People really recognize the power that they have. We're even seeing things like Ardent Sensor being purchased for Karma, sometimes Nami. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's all about enabling your AD carries. Oh, a little bit of a dodge from Norse Garen. So we are expecting Cloud9 to be a little bit more aggressive with their double teleports to try playing the ma macro play, but Dream Team have got double teleports of their own mm -hmm. to answer. Yeah, and that's really going to rely on the level 6 from Peek and Wolf. And honestly, I say level 6 for Kasten, but I really mean level 11 and 16. Yeah. He really wants to hit those points. So Dream Team have a bit of scaling here. Uh, the Hecarim in the mid-late game is actually quite potent, as well as the Ash, more utility-based for the engage. So Dream Team have ways to start fights off, even if Cloud9 Challenger want to siege. So Cloud9 Challenger have disengage, but I'm very interested to see what happens, because if Dream Team get an early advantage, they can continue to force the issue. Whereas Cloud9 Challenger, if they get an advantage, then it, it becomes very hard for Dream Team not to basically kamikaze. They'd, mm. they'd engage, and then they'd end up just sacrificing themselves for the chance at a fight. Yeah. Lots of crowd control on Cloud9 can definitely turn any unfavorable situation into a worse situation very quickly. So we'll see if which team is going to get that initial advantage. So far, looks like Cloud9 with a minor... 200 gold lead, but this is somewhat what we expect from the LCS veterans and very skilled and talented players on Cloud9's yeah. roster. Right, right now, it's just that bottom lane. It's that CS difference. Uh, it's six, but it's 130 gold. 
just because Massacre has been shoved out of lane a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually very surprised at how they're playing right now because they don't have wards in the river. They don't know if Contrax is here. They have way more mana. Norskaren has full and not going for the harass at the moment where you could kind of push him out of lane right now if you play it correctly on the side of Dream Team. Yeah, Contrax is going to try to dodge the vision of Acadian. I don't think he was spotted. Uh, I don't think so either. Um, and I don't think he's going to smite this camp right now. And Pika Wolf, yeah, going to TP back. So we see this happen a lot where mid laners back, they get an item. If you have TP, you use your first TP just to get back to lane, whether you buy another Doran's Ring or you buy uh, your first big purchase. And yep, Acadian pings out that his Gromp is gone, so Graves was bottom at some point in the last 50 seconds. Pretty big window, but didn't quite result in anything. Stronger balls again. Trading it out against each other. Yeah, you really have to exploit the Swain early on, pre-level 6. And especially once he gets his Catalyst and has level 6. It's the support fight in the bot lane right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Snare actually is going to find Senskaren. Uh, Norskaren. Excuse me. <laughs> we got Chalkboard, man. That's, yep. that's one. That's one. That's <laughs> one. Strike one. <laughs> yeah. Norskaren. New support for Dream Team. And he's going to be able to heal up and go back. Contracts once again going to invade, but this side of the jungle was just cleared by Acadian, who's currently waiting on the top side in that tri bush. Yeah, I, I like that he has the blue smite. He's going to get that extra movement speed, do damage, get damage. Uh, they saw, they saw Contracts walk in, so this is actually going to be quite close as well because both top laners are almost level six and they want it desperately. Where did Acadian go? Acadian like ran to go check his camps. Contracts went all the way um, around, and oh, Acadian might be trying to bait Contracts in. There goes Acadian. That's a Ghost lot hit. of damage. Flash, but you cannot escape the onslaught of shadows. Meanwhile, Tarong will get level six and force balls away. Yeah, Acadian runs straight at him. Doesn't have the ultimate just yet. Still sitting at that level five, and Tarong. Now it's this is right. Clear the wave out. Push it out. Make sure that it gets to the turret. Break the freeze, and make sure that he can't keep it there, and then. Hold that wave forever, and he oh he's gonna get a little greedy doing stuff. So. doesn't have any mana though. Oh, Chirong is gonna back it off. Acadian even, yeah, has to scare him away. Yeah. Well played there. That's the that's the whole idea behind Hecarim is you have a summoner spell that has a hundred and fifty second cooldown. Keep using it over and over again. Go to a lane and get their flash even, and then use then use it over again, mm -hmm. and just keep doing that. I think that it's incredibly beneficial, and what we've missed in the mid lane is summoner spell, Peek and Wolf used flash, and High had used his uh, his ultimate. Mm. So you can see both those on cooldown at the moment, and that could actually spell disaster for Peek and Wolf in the near future without having teleport or flash. Yeah, very important to get these incremental advantages so that later on you can take better use. Now, Acadian will be caught in his own jungle by Contracts. They both got Smite. Acadian gets it. And he hits six as well. If Contracts, okay, he calls for help. High's already roaming there, which is the right play. He can move back so they knew that if the mid laner is able to roam first, then they win. Yeah, it looks like they decide not to contest it. Too much time before Beacon Wolf could get back. Yeah, and they really want to hand this blue off to Pekin Wolf so that he can have it. Hecarim is a very mana-hungry jungler, but Kastin is incredibly mana-hungry mana hungry in the mid lane. In solo queue, you take this. <laughs> well, this this isn't solo queue. Yeah. It might have it might have evolved from the solo queue ladder. True. But this this is professional League of Legends. And it's all about enabling your teammates to make fantastic things happen. Putting faith in the cast in that he's going to be able to carry. Yeah, I, and I think that he can. I think that there's a an avenue where he gets onto the gin, where he gets into that back line and finds a flank and decimates the team. And that's what they're waiting for is eventually Peek and Wolf will get to that point. It's going to be a while. I'm looking at Acadian right now because he's gone tank. He does have Strength of Ages. Uh, and he does have the Cinder Hulk path currently starting up for him. Uh, I'm interested to see if he goes Trinity Force second item, or even if he just rushes Trinity Force flat out and goes for something like Phage. Hmm. I knew Trinity Force is so strong. I remember when the Hecarim build was Iceborne Gauntlet when it oh. used to stack up and get huge. Contracts is going to go deep. 
This is a problem because Tyrone is actually getting pushed out of the top side, so balls can contest this. They, this may not be Acadian's red for much longer, especially with High coming up as well. High is starting to move. They've got double vision. Peek and Wolf not quite going to collapse in time. Contracts is level six, so they might try to burn down Tyrone. Acadian is waiting. Oh, they interrupt the Tyrone. Damage. The snare lands as well. They burst him down before he can respond. Yeah, and you can see Peek and Wolf roaming a little bit late on it, though. And yeah, that's going to be the kill going over to balls in the top lane. Contract's getting that assist. Acadian was still kind of hanging out on the right-hand side. I believe he had ultimate and ghost. That is a long-range arrow. Oh, that is a very long-range arrow. He catches high, but it's still one, two versus three, and they cannot commit. There's a flash ultimate. Here comes a teleport, but it's just too late. Peek and Wolf is going to find Lemonation, though, who's gone a little too far for the roam. Exhaust buys him some time. Yeah, really strange fight there. Acadian, it looked like they said, okay, we're going to TP in, and he got ultimated from high, and he didn't get to ulti himself or use Ghost, he, and he turned back. It was really strange how he approached that fight. Altec landing the first bullet, but missing the last three. Maybe getting a little frustrated with that last shot, but here's the arrow yeah. once again. Contracts, whoa, dodges out arrow of the way. Arrow comes through. Acadian thinks it's great. He smites it away. He walks back, and then he walks back into them to use a Q instead of just ultiing flat out. And then that ended up being no time for the teleport. He gets destroyed. And then they all get to collapse on Pekin with and push him out. So yeah, now Cloud9 back in the lead, two kills to one. Yeah, we talked about how hard it would be for Dream Team to get any sort of plausible fight if they end up falling behind. And we saw it right there. Acadian caught out of position, got CC'd to death and destroyed. Yeah by Cloud9. They have to find they have to fall way further behind before it gets to that point. But as the proto belt will come in for Trung in the future, it looks like he's actually gonna go for maybe the Abyssal Scepter before then, seeing that he needs a lot of magic resistance for both high and and balls. Yeah we'll see how Trung decides to continue to build. Dream team do have time on their side. They've got Cassidy and Rumble, so they've got some pretty big AP scaling. Yeah, they have to get to those Rod of Ages, though, because if you look over at the side of Cloud9 Challenger, they already have they both of theirs finished. completed. Yeah. yeah, and those two kills going over to Balls are pretty big. He's up 400 gold, though, so it's not as much as you would think. Contracts, though, oh, on the bot side no. again. Nor Scarin from over the wall oh. is going to help lock down a kill with C9C. They're going to go bot. Yeah, Massacre has Balls been spotted out. Balls even teleported in. With no arrow, Massacre. <laughs> I hope you're not a fan of your name as they dive forward. Balls gets him, gets him down. Yeah, and now they have to find something else to do on the map. Jerome has to push the top lane. Peek and Wolf got shoved out by High. Ultimate is available for High, and here comes Acadian. Oh, that was the E. That was the E. There. He's still got his ultimate, though. High turns it back around onto Acadian. He rides the onslaught out. Yeah, and Contract shows up, and it makes him run away, use his ultimate to get out of there. I'm very surprised that Acadian is not blowing his ghost more often just to use it. You can, I mean, it's a 150-second cooldown. It is half the cooldown of Flash. You use it, you get extra damage as Hecker. Mm -hmm. Looks like Cloud9 Challenger taking an early advantage. They secure the first Drake and a 2,200 gold lead 12 minutes in. North Scarin trying to fight over a ward, fights off way more than he can chew. Yep, Contracts on this side again. Contracts keeps doing this. He's hanging out on this right side of the jungle, and they're definitely playing to the bottom side here. Ulti's to get over the wall wow. so that he can actually close this distance. Doesn't have to wait for the cooldown. Because if he doesn't do that, he doesn't cut off Massacre fast enough, and if Massacre recognizes that they're going to collapse, he gets to walk to his Tier 2. So he had to do that and couldn't wait for his quick draw cooldown. Yeah, quite unfortunate for Dream Team is Cloud9 Challenger trying to take control of this game and eliminate the scaling of Dream Team before it gets a chance to take off. Rod of Ages finally finished for Peek and Wolf, but that is still... A little bit too late. Oh, the oh boy. snare hits Massacre. Norskaren is going to take a few of these hits, though. Uh, Kadian's coming around, but I don't know how much he can accomplish right now without his Onslaught of Shadows, without the ultimate. They're going to try it anyway. Yeah, they no know. teleports. They know there Definitely are no time teleports. To go. Arrow, whoa, he's going to miss. They're going to have to settle for Lemonation. Bubble locks him down. Jerome even teleports uh, in. And Akkadian, oh, he gets healed. Yep, Kadian gets out of there. And yeah, it's Pekin Wolf and Jerome both teleporting down. And look at immediately Cloud9 Challenger. Push mid, push top. They're going to get more for this. 
Yeah, it's a kill and a tier one turret, but two. That top tier one did go down. Yeah, they got top, and I think they got mid off of that push as well. Unless they had it before. Not certain. Pekin Wolf is going to chase forward, though. Clears the wave out. I lands a snare and a good bit of damage, but he should be fine. And it looks like Chirong is actually the one who's hard chopping in the bottom. Dodges the snare from Altec. Oh, yeah. He did have it before. Anyway. Yeah. Got it before he roamed to the top side and then... Contract still down. waiting in the jungle. Oh. Acadian immediately turns it around. He's slowed. He's going to take some damage before he finally gets out. And Cloud9 Challenger are living in the jungle. They collapse on the Contracts, but High goes back in to turn it around. Contracts flashes the wall to safety. And there's an aggressive flash on the far side. They are going to be able to pick up the kill onto Contracts, but Cloud9 aren't done just oh. yet. High turns it around to bully the rest of Dream Team away. Chirong tries to collapse. The Equalizer finds damage under High. Oh, high. He's getting burned down. Chirong is finally going to be able to secure the kill as Lemonation is forced to get away. Oh, Balls just barely making it out of there. Doesn't have a flash, so Chirong, you know, in a perfect world, he's able to chase that, but Lemonation able to give the speed and has the exhaust, so doesn't blow his own flash to chase it down. Meanwhile, Altec getting a turret. We talked about the macro game from Cloud9 Challenger. Macro makes the difference here. Yeah. Again, just playing for those turrets, playing across. Dream Team was the team that we said if they could play the macro game, they would be able to keep up. Well, right now, that doesn't quite seem to be the case. They finally make a good collapse on the mid lane, but they still lost two Tier 1 turrets and a few members of their own team. So Cloud9 Challenger looking to propel that lead further forward as they get deeper and deeper vision into Dream Team's side of the jungle to further enable them to dive and uh, invade as time goes on. But for now, things seem to have slowed down a bit as people recall and get a few items. Oh, oh, Lemonation flashes the wall for Norse Garen. They try to turn on the Massacre, but he gets outside of the era, uh, bullet range. Acadian is going to force the disengage, but there's Contracts. Acadian gets locked down. He onslaughts before High gets a chance to use his ultimate. No kills come through, but flash from Lemonation for the point blank Mantra Q. You have to watch out here. Trong does have a power spike with the Proto Belt completed. But I mean, how are they gonna kill balls at the end of the day? It's gonna be so wow. hard. To oh, Contracts is able to get the kill onto Acadian, and oh, Norskaren drops to Altec as well as Cloud9 dive and pick up two kills. That's definitely the rudest welcome you could have. Yeah, coming over here, and playing for a challenger team, and then going up against basically an LCS team. Yeah, everybody on this squad has LCS experience, save for Contracts, and it's not because he's not good enough. It's because he wasn't old enough. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a very talented performance from Cloud9's new jungler. Yeah, 4 2 and 4, 100% kill participation right now. Contracts is going off. And look at this. He understands his limits, throws it out. Oof. Oh, okay. End of the line was what got the kill. Yeah, so the end of the line has a hammer shape. It goes forward and it also has, uh, goes off to the left and right at the end. Like a capital T. Yep. It always looks like a sledgehammer when you use the, uh, the range indicator, uh -huh. and it looks pretty cool. But it's a it's very unique ability, kind of similar to like a uh, very small Velkaz Q, <laughs> except it blows up the entire way. And then it comes back. Yeah. <laughs> so it was actually really cool that that ended up happening there. Instead of hitting a wall, he throws it out and throws out the ultimate. Does the damage it's on the way back follow the animation, or is it just instantaneous? Because it does have the boom. <laughs> I did a motion with my hands. You guys can't see it. I don't know. A little interesting. Very small window. I can't imagine I would assume so. being able to react out of it. But Cloud9 Challenger continue to expand their advantage as they now take Rift Herald and gift it over to Balls in the solo lane. I mean, the guy is 3-0 and 2, and he's pretty much wrecking house right now. It's, gonna, yeah. it's going to be so hard to kill this Swain. It, it becomes a gigantic chore for your team, especially since you don't want to buy an Executioner's Calling right now. Oh my goodness. Oh, he is going to get hit by that arrow. Oh, Acadian? Yeah, they're trying to turn it around. Can they lock down contracts? The teleport is going to be stalled out as a good bubble lands. High hops over towards the other side of his team. There are some good bullets from Altec, but Cloud9 have got to step away for now. Yeah, it was actually a rather good engage there for Massacre. Contracts doesn't dodge the arrow, and honestly, Cloud9 don't take the complete fight because the entry from High was stopped and Balls was back in the base, so. Still walking the lane as Swain. 
Um. Hey guys, I finished Zonia's. Check it out. Yeah, I, I, I put it on the key that I want it to be on. Sometimes when you swap it to a different key and you like drag it from your inventory, you will end up clicking it. So yeah. unlucky there, but let's see. Uh, not going to get the steel claw. And they still turn on to Norskar, and he gets bursted down. He's got a Zonia's to keep him alive, but he gets destroyed before he gets a chance to use it as the rest of Dream Team will chase forward and get Cloud9 away. Oh. And oh, there's a double flash from Peek and Wolf and Chirong to get away. Yeah. They get one kill for one, but I would always take a mid laner over support any day there, as well as taking the Cloud Drake. Kind of minor victories there for Dream Team. He does not have that Zonia. No, he does. Now he does. Now he does. Okay. I was like, it's Lissandra. They always have Zonias at this time. <laughs> they always <laughs> have it. Yeah, he used the ultimate and then didn't have the Zonias completed. He had the Fiendish Codex. So he was well on his way, too. But, yep. yep. Heard ya. And was like, okay, next fight. Next fight, I got him. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> Through time and space, I is like, huh, I should get Zonias. After already having built the component items. <laughs> All right, so now it's 5,000 gold in favor of Cloud9. Once again, they've been taking favorable fights, and at 9-6, to six, they're looking very confident moving forward. 3-0-2 oh, on that Swain, 4-3-4 four, four on Contract Graves. Yeah, it's getting a little bit risky, though, because of Contract Graves. Uh, it's ending up being a little bit uh, worse than it should because he was doing so well in the early game, but now he's being super aggressive and they don't always have the ward coverage or the numbers because, like, right now, Balls is back in base and they still went for an aggressive invade, even though they know that the TP from Peek and Wolf is up. Is this a Baron play? 20 minutes and 50 seconds. Baron has been up for less than a minute. Hawkshot is going to go across. No blue trinkets for another 45 to 30 seconds for Dream Team. Ooh, looking at the items here, a little bit of a, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> you can see that there's an Abyssal Scepter for Chirong, but for Peek and Wolf, he's also building one. It's a great item to have, but we'll talk about that in a second. Oh, Cloud9 set up the Death Push and hard engage Woo. onto Dream Team, picking two kills. And you can see all the damage coming through immediately. They blow up Massacre because he has no uh, summoner spell heal. He has to blow his flash and High still chases with the flash expecting that that's going to happen. And then Chirong has to turn it at that point because he's just caught in the slow. And now they lay the bait. Uh-oh. Is he going to bite? Acadian. He's walking up now. Oh, okay. So he just drops a ward. And immediately after the ward, Cloud9 decides to start trying to burn all the Balls in. Balls is in that red pit right there. And kind of playing Bring Around the Rosie. So too is Peek and Wolf. He joined up with the rest of his team. Cloud9 doing so much. There's the onslaught of shadows, but Acadian goes down. Baron is secured, and Balls is able to keep Norskaren and Peckenwolf out of the fight. Yeah, Acadian goes down, tried to go for the smite there. A little bit lower than contracts in level, but honestly, he dove in because he didn't have the vision at the time. Norskaren puts down the ward a little bit late. As a jungler, you have that internal timer, and you're like, okay, I, I, I got to go now and he ends up going for it. Yeah, he actually dives in pretty much right before the ward comes down because in his internal clock, he's like, it's already it's already about to die. This is the moment to do it. You kind of just, <laughs> my jungler sense is tingling. You've got to count it out, think on it. My people need me. And then you just <laughs> dive into the pit. <laughs> I must go. That Baron has got my name on it. Except, it did not though. <laughs> except not that time. That's what Contracts was thinking. Yeah. Not I mean, there. Acadian was yeah. thinking it too. He was just wrong. <laughs> really a tragic situation. But Cloud9, again, have got complete control of the game. They've got Baron buff. 23 minutes in, they are up 12 to 6. Yep. I mean, <laughs> Cloud9 kind of acting like they have dinner plans. They're just like, all right, yep, let's uh, just play the macro game. Let's outplay them. Contracts go in the jungle. We'll be good. They're doing it once again. Acadian is going to tank one bullet, but all tech. Probably not going to be able to finish him off. Ooh. He gets some great Ulti? damage with the crit, and collateral damage is flashed. Yeah, almost there. Had to flash away, but this is going to be them sieging the turret. And like I said, the wave clear from Dream Team, not very good. They have to throw down the ultimate from Chirong, and it still doesn't catch even these minions that have the damage reduction. That's going to be an inhibitor turret. Yeah, they're able to take the turret. Chirong gets snared, and Proto Belt is used to escape. Dream Team are trying to turn it around, but they just don't have enough 
to stop Cloud9 from barreling down this inhibitor. Their Onslaught of Shadows is ready. They turn it into a fight. Acadian gets destroyed as Pikenwolf is on the far side. So much damage from Cloud9. They've got Baron and the minions right now. This is a huge, huge team from Cloud9 Challenger. They're gonna shove forward. Nexus turret number one goes down. Nexus turret number two is gonna be stalled out as they look for a few more kills. Peckenwolf will drop. Finally, that's four members dead and Cloud9 Challenger take down the Nexus turrets, take down the Nexus and win game number one against Dream Team. That's a 34 minute victory 34 30 right there or 24 30 24 minutes yeah that's absolutely insane how quickly they just ended that game They're like okay we're playing the map a little bit we're getting your turrets every time that tp came through from dream team the answer was better from cloud nine we saw pretty much the same scenario happen where cloud nine was like okay we tp bottom what did dream team get they got one turret some yeah. damage on it and then when they when dream team pulled that move cloud nine got multiple turrets and multiple waves of pressure. It was just the macro play from Cloud9 that we talked about. The experienced shot calling and the fact that High was just so oppressive on that Lissandra all over the map, supporting contracts. Yeah, contracts. The new jungler who went off. And I think this is something that we should see more of moving on in the future because we always talked about jungle mid lane synergy. This is the type of synergy that I want to see is a mid laner that knows that he has the shove advantage in this matchup. He can keep casting underneath his turret he gets to push it up, knows that every time uh, your jungler invades, play to that side a little bit and make sure that you're able to reinforce it much faster than the other. So Contracts had full confidence going into the enemy jungle, yeah. which is exactly what you need to see as a jungle mid lane synergy. And that's a pretty terrifying thing to have, especially when you're playing against essentially three fifths of old school Cloud9. Suddenly they've got this jungler, not Meteos, who's going to farm and drop wards and vision, but someone who's going to invade and ganked and, and be backed up by his team. It really creates a terrifying predicament. Dream Team, on the other hand, they did show some resilience. They tried to play around the map as best they can, but they just couldn't quite keep up. Yeah, Dream Team, they definitely looked a little bit out of sort there. They look like uh, Cloud9 Challenger. I mean, if you're able to get kind of beaten that quickly, you have to look at your draft a little bit and say, okay, were these the right picks for us? No wave clear on a late game scaling composition. How do we make it to late game? And then Cloud9 goes, oh, well, we got Baron. There's nothing you can do about this. And I'm actually kind of unsurprised that one Baron ends the game when you look at the compositions. Yeah, well, considering it is Cloud9, who were known for taking the one Baron and getting so much value out of that one single thing. So again, that was still a very early Baron play that they were able to convert into a win. But as mentioned, Dream Team going to need to take a look at their compositions going into this next match. But on top of that, I think they're also going to need to tighten up their play a little bit more as well. Yeah, I think that they were kind of getting bullied in the bottom lane and in the mid lane. And I think that has to do a little bit with the picks, but also a little bit with the aggression. I thought Acadian on the Hecarim, I know that he was getting invaded by contracts, but yeah. being able to use your ghost on cooldown, just visit lanes as Hecarim is definitely a good option for you. You're going to lose a quadrant of your jungle every time that you gank, but I still think that you just apply pressure. You make sure that they can't keep making the plays that they were making because, I mean, you look at the bottom lane, it's a Jin, right? It's a Jin Karma. You, maybe yeah. you can visit there, even run straight through the lane after you see Karma use shield. Yeah, Things and like that. Uh, on top of that, not they also pick the scaling composition like, okay, if we make it long enough, we'll be able to fight. Well, Cloud9 kind of pushed the envelope a little bit faster than expected. Yeah, I think that this composition, though, is what really sells it for me is Graves. He went forward. Contracts went into the jungle over and over again to try and accelerate the pace, and he succeeded in doing so with the 100% kill participation he had early on, uh, like 4-2-4, and four, like did an outstanding job, yeah. even sacrificing himself twice and like kind of having some bad invades. But still, I think that's acceptable for the advantages he was able to get. But the wave clear versus the lack of wave clear is just what always stands out to me when I see these compositions because you have to blow Rumble Ultimate to clear even just a normal wave if they're piling up. Yeah. And you need that for the fights. Yeah, definitely very important cooldown. We'll see if they can adapt. Now, we're going to reset the rift while the teams talk strategy for Game 2 of Dream Team versus Cloud9 Challenger. Stay with us.
long range arrow. Oh. It's a very long range arrow. He catches high, but it's still one, two versus three, and they cannot commit. There's a flash ultimate. Here comes a teleport, but it's just too late. And Cloud9 Challenger are living in the jungle. They collapse on the contracts, but high goes back in to turn it around. He's got a Zanyas to keep him alive, but he gets destroyed before he gets a chance to use it. Their Onslaught of Shadows is ready. They turn it into a fight. Acadian gets destroyed.